Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Eric's Bathtub Musings, a place where philosophy and bathing can join to bring you all the latest in cognitive analysis, taxonomy, and other fun intellectual stuff. Okay, today's topic is heuristics. Heuristics. One way to think about cognitive functions in general is to think of them as one's preferred heuristics and heuristic making and testing mechanisms. So a heuristic is simply a rule of thumb. It's a default that one uses when assessing a situation. Let's say I'm going to rent uh, an apartment. I'm going to check out an apartment to rent. And I notice a lot of teenagers hanging around outside the apartment building. Well, depending on my type, I might react to that differently. And it depends also on what the teenagers look like and stuff like that. So, regardless, I'm going to have some sort of heuristic about that, some sort of rule of thumb that allows me to, without going and talking to all the teenagers, without really testing my hypothesis, that we make a decision about the place. Oh, it looks kind of gangy, I might say. Or it looks loud because there's a lot of teenagers around. Or it looks subject to a lot of crime because I don't like what's within teens, or whatever you might conclude. Maybe you conclude that I'm going to fit in fine here with me and my three teenage boys. Or maybe you conclude, I don't want my teenagers around these teenagers. Whatever it is, you've got some sort of rule of thumb for dealing with it without actually analyzing the situation in great depth. If we had to do a full amount of research and due diligence on everything, we'd never get anything accomplished. So the heuristic that one uses and creates as one moves through life are very closely related to the cognitive function stack. So for example, as an expert intuitor, my default nature, which is my number one underlying heuristic is when I enter a new situation, is to take from whatever is there and build off it new possibilities, new meanings, new words, new storylines, new narratives, whatever. I do that without thinking about it. I don't go into a situation and say, how am I going to approach this new event, this new phenomenon, in such a way that I can make evaluations of it and interact with the situation um, appropriately? Some types make better first impressions than others. ENTPs don't usually make very good impressions. I don't because in high stress situations, what tends to come off is the SE. That just tends to go off the loose cannon function. It's very much related to situations where you're compelled to move in some fashion without in an environment that you're not comfortable with or in a time frame you're not comfortable with or whatever. So especially with first impressions, it's a circumstance in which an individual is relying on a lot of FE. But as a tertiary user of FE, I'm fairly sloppy in my that would be execution, as is indicated by the fact that I'm making a video while taking a bath. I don't know if you can see your wiener. What? I don't know if you can see your wiener. No, no, I can see my wiener. Anyway, that was Kimberly. She can see my wiener if she wants to. Anyway, uh, this heuristic thing explains a lot about why people end up having types because a cognitive function isn't just 
a endowment by nature. It's not that really. It's instead a persistent habit of attention. And we all exist in different manners of attention, including ones that are not our favorite manners of attention. The more one metacognates, the more one is able to identify those moments, distinguish between them, and say, okay, well, this is where I'm, what is happening right now. I'm using, I'm experiencing FI. It's confusing. Me. I don't know what to do about it. In those moments, I usually remember what Kimberly says. You just have to sit with it. Sit with the feelings. Anyway. My point is, for me, my heuristics are as follows. It's make possibilities about things. So, what did I do today, for example? I said to take a bath. Well, that's boring. What am I going to do to make it more interesting? I can make a video. So, I did. And I get not as much good SI out of it. What does that mean? Less of my attention is paid to the pleasurable sensation of taking a bath. More of my attention is paid, much more of my attention is paid to the ideation process, namely the NETI under a meta framework of FE steps of um, cognition that I naturally undertake. If I am an SI DOM, I'm not doing this. I'm not making a video while I'm taking a bath. I'm just taking a bath as an end in itself that meets all my needs in the moment and should be attended to with all my attention. So when you're trying to, when you come up against somebody who's arguing something like people can't be typed, everyone's unique, um, typing is hocus pocus or just the same thing as astrology or whatever. The explanation to answer that is no, it's not because there are a finite number of ways that people pay attention and people pay attention habitually in certain of those manners and not in others. They value highly things that achieve legitimacy under certain manners of attention and countervalue those that don't. This is naturally the case. By metacognating, you might free yourself from some of those reflexive limitations that come along with not metacognitive about how you pay attention or failing to even distinguish between the fact that you do pay attention in different ways that it can be taxonomy these things are all critical to in my opinion the ultimate development of the self if if you aren't operating with a model that taxonomies attention it's not about typing people it's about understanding the ways in which people pay attention and the ways in which those manners of attention relate to each other the reason SI, FI is my uh, seventh function is because it runs directly counter to my tool function. It's naturally going to be the case that if I'm spending my time doing logically consistent stuff that's, that removes as a factor the personal and subjective experience of emotions um, in order to determine its legitimacy, then I'm going to counter value those subjective and personal expressions of emotions, especially when used as warrants for arguments. It, it's impossible that it would be otherwise that I would spend all my time using this, this tool in this way, something come along and say, well, I want something that is counter to this, this mechanism of attention that you're, you're so accustomed to using, and I believe it's of equal legitimacy, but it's the only way you get yeah, accustomed yourself to legitimizing things. You're not going to be able to metacognate at that point and say, oh, well, the reason your position, though crazy and wrong under my TI framework, has equal legitimacy is because your FI framework is fundamentally um, subjective and it's also fundamentally personal. It doesn't make it less valid. In fact, most things in life that we do are more valid on a personal subjective level than they are on an impersonal or disinterested so, uh, objective level of CIRFB. It's just a matter of what's being talked about. So if someone's doing public policy or something like that, there's no business for FI there, or TE for that matter. Anyhow, enough about that. That's enough about my uh, 
Heuristic, heuristics and cognitive functions, bathtub musings 101. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to clean your teeth.